Well, hello. We want to welcome you to our third episode of Cricket Courage. Cricket Courage. Um, this is a space where we are telling the stories of diverse people. And today on our show, our guest is Alvin Stewart. He also is known as Nikki. Is that right, Nikki? Nick. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> He's also known as Nick. <laughs> I think it's because I looked at his daughter card and her name is Nikki and that threw me off. So anyway, his, he's also known as Nick. Um, uh, Alvin joined our church July 19th. He joined United Church of Hyde Park, but he had been coming for a year. Um, and some of you know him a little bit, but I thought it would really be fun to get to know a little bit more about his story. So he agreed to come and uh, he is here with us today. So we are looking forward to getting to know Alvin Stewart a little bit better. Thank you. So, uh, Alvin, uh, last week I started out with uh, just asking people a little bit about their origins. Um, so tell us a little bit about your name. Like some people have these interesting stories that come with your, their name. Maybe it's simple as my grandmother named you, I'm named after an uncle, but what, tell us how did you get your name? Uh, Alvin came by way of my parents, I, I know not of the history of it. Nikki came by way of my mother, who had a girlfriend, who also was named Nikki. Mm -hmm. I now have several children who bear the same name. Nikki. Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> but you're Nick, right? I'm Nick. Yes. Right, because I thought you said you were Nikki too. <laughs> no. Okay, so you're Nick. Initially, I was Nikki. Okay, so okay. you were Nikki. I was a Nikki, yes. Okay, and how did that go over when you were growing up being a Nikki? Well, did you get any backlash or? No, people who have known me over fifty years, maybe sixty, refer to me as Nikki. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you got to be in that age group, right? Okay. Or so. otherwise, your <laughs> uh, names are Nick and Alvin. Yes. Okay. Okay, okay. Well, it's so good to have you um, on our show today. Uh, also, uh, generally when I start conversations with people, I will say I'm the daughter of Herman and Dorothy. Those are my parents. And I also claim I am the daughter of Sojourner Truth. And from someone else, I was reminded that I am the daughter of God. So, if you were to introduce yourself as the son of whomever, who do you feel like you're the son of? Uh, my father's name is William Stewart. My mother's name is Jackie Stewart. That would be my mother and father, that I would be the uh, son of them. And I don't have a lot of history. There was not a lot of history shared, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Uh, just didn't come that way. Mm -hmm. I wish it had, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but uh, it's very limited. Okay. Okay. So, um, well, and, and so you were born here in Chicago and have lived in Chicago all your life? I was not born in Chicago. I was born in Cleveland, Ohio, county of Cuyahoga. I came here as an infant, mm -hmm. and technically I am a Chicagoan, but I was born in Cleveland, Ohio, mm -hmm. 1937. Okay, thank you for that information. <laughs> you want to give us the month also? In July the, the 13th. July the 13th. Just had a birthday. Just had a birthday. Did you do anything fun for your birthday? Uh, no, but I, I, I deal with life like every, every day is a birthday. Uh, mm -hmm. You celebrate that day, the next day, on, and so on. I don't just look at July the 13th as a birthday anymore. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, and that's beautiful that every day we live is yeah. kind of like a day we haven't seen. And so, mm -hmm. um, kind of reminds you of the scripture that says, this is the day that the Lord hath made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it because it's, it's another day. So, one of the questions that I have for you today is, what is something that you have accomplished in life that you feel proud of? My children. Uh, 
most of them are very successful. Mm -hmm. uh, from PhD to uh, Nicole, who has her own Pilates studio. Mm -hmm. uh, Tracy, who's no longer with us, who got a free or full ride to Northwestern University. Mm -hmm. uh, Nadja, who went to Purdue on basically a free ride. Uh, my son, it took him eight years, but he got it uh, from uh, Tuskegee. Mm -hmm. So he's an electrical engineer. So uh, those are my successes. Your children? My right. children. Mm -hmm. And what happened to your daughter that transitioned? She had bipolar, mm -hmm. MS, uh, diabetes, mm -hmm. and she died of a heart attack. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Well, well, I'm glad to hear that you had five daughters and one son, and that you're proud of all of them. I am. I am. Good, good. Um, what brought you here to United Church of High Park? It wasn't a what. It wasn't a what. <laughs> it wasn't a what. No, it, it wasn't a what. <laughs> it was a person. <laughs> Not what. Who? <laughs> Who brought you here? I mean, uh, I know the story, but... Others are listening in. Yeah, I'm a lady named Barbara Finley. Mm -hmm. uh, she, she said, why don't you go to church with me? I said, reluctantly, okay. So uh, I went to church with her. And I was most amazed or in awe with the fact that there was a female the pastor. I love, I love that part. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, that was captivating. The violinist, uh -huh. my favorite instrument. Uh, she too, being female. So all these wonderful attractions uh, just started pulling me in. <laughs> then the, uh, the choir. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it was eight, sometimes it was ten. But they sang like they was just uh, uh, an abundance of people, and, and, and they, they sang with feeling, mm -hmm. okay? So uh, those were the basic things that got me here. So it was a woman that brought you here and a woman that kept you here? Yes, no, <laughs> no, not quite. Not quite, so but, go uh, ahead, clarify for me. <laughs> okay, um, the spirit of the environment kept me here, mm -hmm. okay, and it was, the encouragement of not only uh, the pastor mm -hmm. and the person who brought me here, but the, the total congregation. Uh, so it was the whole community. The entire community, yes. There's something special about United Church of Hyde Park. If you don't go here, you might want to check us out. So uh, what's a favorite song of yours? Uh, you're talking about church song or otherwise? Whatever hits you. Feelings. Feelings, okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, what is it about that song that you like? Uh, it's intimate. It is intimate, okay. Okay. And so, are you an intimate kind of person? And also, uh, I'm very sentimental. Mm -hmm. But uh, I can give you a list of, of songs. Uh, it's, it's, it's a tricky question. Uh, songs always, to me, represent a particular time. Mm -hmm. uh, like when I was in the Air Force, uh, Nat King Cole uh, mm -hmm. was the guy I related to. But then I graduated into, in, into jazz, and there were songs uh, like Take the A Train. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, she sang with Count Basie. It, what, uh, uh, Ella Fitzgerald. Okay. Okay. So uh, to say that is the only uh, song that's my favorite. Uh, I'm kind of not sharing with the public uh, the whole truth. 
Right, and I hear you. I, I'm reading this memoir by Dr. Cornell West, and I, I mean, I think I vaguely knew he liked music, but he loves music and kind of mm -hmm. like you everything, whether he was in love or breaking up or getting a divorce. Like there was always this song that kind of yeah. <laughs> went along with the moment. Yeah. And so I think that music is is very powerful. And I think more so than any other art form, that it's a way of connecting people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we were talking with Jade a couple of weeks back and she was talking about art, you know, and the power of expression. And I think music gives us a way to kind of express ourselves. Yes, you it know. does. So it's really critical right now while we're going through COVID um, music um, and the way it allows us to express and release ourselves. Favorite movie. or When I say favorite, it doesn't mean that it's like your best movie. It's your only song. But just a movie that you like. Once Upon a Time in America. Once Upon a Time in America. Well, tell me what that <laughs> I'm not sure I saw that. So what year was it, you know, about what time period and what is it about? Uh, it's about the migration of uh, the Jewish gangs in New York. Okay. Uh, Robert De Niro is one of the stars. James Wood is the other star. Mm -hmm. Uh, De Niro, uh, most, of, most of his uh, performances are he's either going to jail or is returning from jail. But he has a, a lot of influence uh, on the Jewish gang. Uh, and it's not a big gang, it's only about five or six of them. Mm -hmm. But they are extremely notorious, but it's the music mm -hmm. that has captivated why I like the song. And, and um, there's a piccolo solo and there's a violin solo. Mm -hmm. And um, there's an Asian uh, part of the movie that you would really enjoy because um, the star is strung out on a coke. Mm -hmm. And that's his way of relaxing himself. Mm -hmm. And it ends that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think if you haven't seen it, go and see it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it, it it's, it's very touching. Very. Okay, okay. So what touches you about the movie? Because what I hear is a Jewish gang. I hear drug addiction. So what, you know, help me a little bit. What, what pulls you into this movie? Why do you think it's a movie? I, you know, one should watch. That's a hard question. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's like... It's just that. a good movie. No, it's, it's just a, well yeah, written. I mean... It's a good movie. I, you know, the story I, is told well, or... See, I don't know if it's told well uh, by way of your interpretation, mm -hmm. but I like the movie because... Any time it's on, I, 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 I stop to see it. You know, uh, I, I compare certain things. People ask you, what do you like to food? Mm -hmm. You have to taste it to see if you like it. Nobody can brag and tell you that this is good until you taste it and make a confirmation if you like it or not. And the movie, uh, it does things that are very realistic. Mm -hmm. Very realistic. Uh, you, you see, friends don't act in friendly manners to each other at, at, some, at some point. Uh, mm -hmm. You just have to, if, you see, if you've seen The Godfather, mm -hmm. it's, it's on that level, but a, to, okay. but a totally different story. So, Once Upon a Time in America. Yes. If you haven't seen it, see it. Nick, Nikki, and Alvin <laughs> say see it. <laughs> so, you know, you shared that you feel really good about your kids and where they are in life. You've lived a, 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 a good amount of years. And um, so I'm wondering, you know, do you have a fond memory, just a memory somewhere um, that you're fond of in all of the years you've lived? No. 
<laughs> no fond memories. <laughs> okay. No. I need. Uh, one guy told me, he said, Nick, you are an amazing person. He said, I've, I've, I've never met a guy like you. Your survival skills are 100% plus. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been in and out of jobs, but I've managed mm -hmm. to pay for a house, mm -hmm. to help my children get through school, uh, and here I am. And I like volunteering. I love volunteering. So you love volunteering, so there may be some fond memories in volunteering. Anytime you can make another person happy, it's a fond, it's a fond memory. Uh, last, two weeks ago, I delivered a box of food to a lady, and she was so happy. Mm -hmm. And she needed it uh, by her expressions. Uh, she was uh, unable to come because her husband, uh, she has to watch. And he is not as mobile as he, uh, mm -hmm. as he once was. And uh, they live in Riverdale. I was just glad that, that uh, I, I serve as somebody who needed to be serviced. Mm -hmm. you, you know, we, we service a lot of people, it's in question, but they needed to be served. Mm -hmm. yeah. You could see and feel the need yeah. with yeah. them. With them. Yeah. So uh, it sounds like your life has been one of struggle, um, but that even though you struggle, um, you get joy out of being able to serve. That That's really kind of your calling to be able to serve others. Oh yeah, yeah I, I volunteered for several churches. Mm -hmm. uh, pick up and deliver. Uh, even though I do it at Christmas, and I, I do not believe in the Christmas as it is celebrated. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> okay. We'll say a little bit more. I mean, when you say you don't believe in Christmas as it is celebrated, I'm not sure I know what you mean, and I want to make sure the viewers know what you're talking about. Well, I think you are sure. <laughs> but, but, stop. <laughs> but it's so commercialized. But we went, uh, we, one of my, my ex-wife and I, we went to our senior citizen dwelling. The guy was in a wheelchair, one arm, and it was, it was, obvious he needed uh, a caregiver. It was obvious he needed. I don't know what we took him, but the presents were irrelevant. He was happy that we were there, okay? It was the interaction between the people, he and I uh, and, and my wife at the time. Uh, the president in the boxes, it, I, don't, I don't know if he ever opened it, uh, at, at least he didn't while we were there. And, and uh, it, it sort of tells you that you can do all this gift wrapping that you want, <laughs> but sometimes it don't hit the target. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's the people themselves that, that, that uh, are the true present. So it's all about human contact. Amen. Okay. 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 I still like gifts, but I do understand what you're saying. So I know your pastor I likes I didn't hit you uh, <laughs> below the bell or nothing. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, so, you know, I remember long ago I was listening to this song by uh, Michael Jackson, and he talked about he was a lover, not a fighter. And so I've always found that comparison or contrast interesting. Do you think you're a lover or a fighter? Both. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Nick is not an easy answer kind of person. You well, like, so you feel like you're both really a fighter and a lover. Say more about that. Uh, 
I'll, 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 I'll start out the nice way. Mm -hmm. I played basketball until I was 49 years old. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, I've had numerous of female friends, mm -hmm. but I've also had numerous of male friends from, from playing ball. And I played ball all over the city. Uh, that was my aggressive uh, me. Mm -hmm. uh, girlfriends, that's where that Nikki thing comes in. Uh, mm -hmm. they, 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 uh, they, they know me as that. I'm also a bridge player, so there's a lot of people, a lot of females, who uh, I've, I've interacted with. And I would have to say both. I, I, I'm uh, of the, the spirit of being a lover and the spirit of being macho, if, if I can use that term. Okay, okay. so you're multifaceted. So people, he was a former basketball player and you are currently um, a bridge player. Yes, I am. Okay. Okay, so good to know. So if you could take a trip anywhere in the world and money was of no objective, it could totally be the way you want, where might you take a trip to? There's a little place in Africa where the people walk so many miles mm -hmm. to get water that's tainted, but they have to get what they can. That's where I would go and try to service mm -hmm. uh, with all this wonderful monies that I would have. Mm -hmm. uh, nowhere else. Mm -hmm. Nowhere else. So you would go to this place in Africa somewhere where the water was not good and it still would be in the end about being able to serve somebody else. Yep. Okay. And do you think you're... Um, also able to receive when somebody wants to serve you? Does it work both ways? Depends on what the gift is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I have a few more questions. I thank you for being so gracious with us. So, I'm just going to throw out three words and you can say which one you gravitate. If you had a choice, would it be the park, the ocean, or the mountains? Park, ocean, mountain. Mm -hmm. I take the park. Okay. Is there anything else you want to <laughs> say? I threw the park in because that's what we've been social distancing. It used to be just the okay. ocean. <laughs> it's too much water for <laughs> the ocean. And the mountains are, are too high. Uh, so one's too low and one's too high. Yeah, they just showed an excerpt of, uh, what's the highest peak, where is it, uh, Mount Everest. Uh, they showed where at, at one point, it's not much trash. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to get rid of the trash uh, by way of other people. And it's, it's really one scary event. Mm -hmm. But so... Uh, I don't, I don't want the, uh, the mountain. I surely don't want all that water. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll take the park. Okay. Hey, I'm, the park is working for me too. <laughs> okay. So, um, Nick, you have been coming to our church before COVID, so I know a lot of people already know you. But is there one thing about you that maybe we don't know that you would like to share as a new member and as a way of us kind of introducing you to the community? I don't know what that is. I, I may be over aggressive, uh, mm -hmm. I, and that may be misinterpreted. I, I'm a helper. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't. I can't help that when when I see the tech here uh, laboring by himself. Why is he laboring by himself? You know, how can I help him? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the only way I can't help him is he don't want me to help him, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, that's just the way I am. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I have one final question. It's a question I ask of everybody who is on this podcast. And that question is, um, in the remainder of time you have left on the earth, is there anything on your bucket list to do? 
I would like to get baptized. Okay, that is workable. Okay. Uh, so would this be your first time? I don't know. You, you don't know? I don't know. Okay, but in your memory? Don't even try it. Okay, okay, okay. So we at United Church of Hyde Park, we can do a baptism. Okay. So let's have a conversation about that. Well, thank you so much for being on Cricket Courage. We're so glad that you are a new member here, but you've been with us for a while, but we welcome you. Thank you.